Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from the Frontier. Thank you as always for stopping by. International markets, Red October, a historic month for shell-shocked investors, writes Jamie. According to Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Red October, conventional 60-40 portfolio of US stocks and treasury bonds lost 5.3%, the worst monthly return since February 2009. Hedge funds bled heavily. Uh, wipe out all year-to-date gains. Um, sub-indices fared even worse. MSCI World Equity Index fell 7.57%, its worst month since May 2012. Um, and basically, emerging market investors pulled 17.1 billion out of emerging stocks in October. However, having said that, Peter Brandt is talking of a possible bullish cup and handle. Dow Jones, I tend to agree with that theory. Currency markets, Euro dollar 114.05, dollar index 96.38, Japanese yen 113.34, Swiss franc 10054, the pound at 130.51, uh, Aussie 0.7220, uh, India rupee 72.975, South Korean one 11.2313. Brazilian real 372.58, Egyptian pound 17.915, and the rand 14.1932. So we've seen further dollar weakness, further strengthening. I think the move has really been led by sterling, which has jumped three big figures in a few sessions. The US currency has jumped about 8% since mid April as the Federal Reserve pushed up interest rates and the world's biggest economy outperformed its peers. So I think that's going to continue. Euro versus the dollar, this is a chart from T Commodity, we're now at 114.05, I expect it to fade off here. Commodity markets, gold, 12.30, key level is 12.42, we need to break that in order to get cracking. Chocolate gets its sweet history rewritten, long believed to have been domesticated in Central America some 4,000 years ago. Cacao has a more interesting story than previously thought. Crude oil closed at its lowest level since April, down 19% from its high last month. This is all about the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia trying to ease the pressure by bringing the price lower in front of the midterm election and currying favor with President Trump. Brent crude, take a look at this chart from T Commodity. Interesting report in Bloomberg in 2018, the number of oil and gas rigs in Africa reached a three-year high according to Baker Hughes. When you go for business development, trying to acquire licenses or make partnerships in West Africa, you can sense the competition. It's like a new California gold rush. There could be at least 41 billion barrels of oil and 319 trillion cubic feet of gas yet to be discovered in sub-Saharan Africa. Mozambique will see $156 billion in tax revenue from Exxon's onshore liquefied natural gas project. You have to be able to take that oil money and redirect some of the windfall of the activity into other sectors. The momentum is there, the development of the newly found fields. You could see a number of new oil provinces cropping up. Raja, the immediate predecessor of the central bank in India, says uh, he's raising concerns over the country's fiscal deficit exclusive conversation with CNBC. 